So welcome to Momash. We're going to use the things that we learned in the last lesson in order to create a Momash, which is pretty much exactly what it looks like. You're basically going to hit little moles that pop up on your computer screen with your finger, very similar to the way we did the score button, only this time it'll be multiple moles rather than a single button. So I'm going to go through this first to show you what the build looks like, and then you guys can go back and build it either from the notes page or the steps to step tutorial that's below this video. So we're going to create a mole mash, essentially. You have a little mole there, and when you touch the mole, your score will go up, except this mole will move around the screen and you touch the mole um, at different points on the screen to increase your score. Pressing the reset button will reset the hits and the misses. It's keeping track of both, the number of times you've missed and the number of times you've hit. The phone will also vibrate when the uh, mole is touched. This is called a haptic response. It's when you have a physical response from some type of electronic device. It's a emerging type of thing. You guys may have noticed that a lot of times on your phones now. They do vibrate in some way when you do certain actions to let you know that the button's been pressed. In the old days, we actually had a button that we could physically feel and press. So humans kind of need that haptic response, some type of physical sensation that something has occurred. So this haptic response will be a slight vibration in the phone every time you do successfully touch the mole. Uh, the mole is going to pop up on the screen randomly once a second. So here's what we're going to look at using. We're going to use image sprites. And uh, this time we're going to determine whether or not we're actually touching a particular image sprite, whereas before we were just touching the screen. The canvas component, of course, a clock component to move the sprite around. A sound component, only this time, the sound component is going to produce a vibration rather than a sound. Next, we're going to have a button to start a new game and some procedures and code to move stuff around. We're also going to talk about how to generate some random numbers and using, of course, we'll be using addition and subtraction. So when you first get started, you're going to connect uh, to the App Inventor website and create a new app called Molemash and open the blocks editor and connect to the device. We're going to need the following components onto the screen. A canvas, an image sprite, a sound, labels, one that says hits, one that says misses, and the actual numbers of hits and misses. So um, you can either do this with two labels, or if you want to, it's a little bit easier if you do it with four labels, but we're, I think we're going to try it with two. A horizontal arrangement to correctly position the labels, a button to reset the number of hits and miss scores to zero, and of course a clock to move them all around. These are all the components that have to go on to your designer. So you create all those. Uh, these are the complete list of components listed out exactly what they do, the names that you should be using for all those components. So you should kind of pause the video and rename all of your components with those names, and it gives you a brief, brief description of what they're going to be doing. So you might want to pause the video at this point and copy all those down. Now we're going to place the action components. We're actually going to do stuff. So drag in a canvas component. You can start with the default name. Eventually you'll change it. Its parent property um, fill for its width will be fill parent. Makes it as wide as the screen. Its height will be 300. Then you'll have your image sprite into canvas one. You're going to rename that picture to mole. You're going to set its picture property to mole.png, which you can find in the Blackboard folder. If you want to use something else other than the mole, feel free. Uh, the mole is sized appropriately. If you use some other picture, you will have to resize it so it fits 
in the screen appropriately. Then you're going to want a button. You're going to want um, it, that beneath the canvas. You're going to rename it to the reset button and set the text property to reset. You're going to have a clock. That will be at the bottom on, under non-visible. You can leave a clock one, but again, I prefer that you rename it based according to our label. It's clock one here, but drag a sound in, and this time um, it'll also be in there, but we're not adding or uploading any sound for this. This is a little different when we start doing the code for this. So your screen should end up looking something like this once you have all the components in, everything labeled properly, and your mole is sitting there with your reset button. Then you're going to put your labels in. Your horizontal arrangement should go beneath the button. And uh, you can keep the name. Put in your two labels. Label 1, the hits label. It's tech property to hits, making sure to include a space after the colon. And then we're going to have another one called uh, hits counter label. Set that text property to 0. Now, if you want to do this as one label, you wouldn't need to create the second label. There is a way to do this all as one label. But if you want to do it as two, that's fine as well. Next, do another horizontal arrangement and put in the next label, which will be Mrs. Label. Call it Mrs. And then after that, put in a text property label called Mrs. Count Label and put that zero. Again, you could do this with one label. It's a little bit trickier in code, but you can do it. So doing it as two labels does make the code nicer and easier to handle. So now your screen should look like something like this. Hits and misses at the bottom there. So now we're going to add in our code. The goal is that the user taps the mole when the screen appear when the mole appears on the screen and it should increase their score if they successfully touch the mole and of course reset makes it zero the program needs to move the mole so we need to write a procedure that will take care of that to move the mole to random locations we're actually going to create something a procedure much like we did in um what's the name of that other program scratch we're going to make procedures uh, we've made procedures before in this, so we're going to make another procedure to handle this. That way it's all encapsulated inside of the single procedure. So what are we going to have to do to move the mole? Well, we've talked about the width and height of our mole in the past, or other image sprites, that when you move an image sprite across the screen, the image location is determined by the upper left hand corner. So when you move this corner to somewhere, that's really how you're moving the entire image. The problem with that is if this corner ends up here right on the very edge of the screen, you won't be able to see the mole. It'll disappear. We don't want that to happen. So we want to limit this to make sure that we fit our mole to the canvas. So we're going to end up having to do some subtraction here and subtract out one width of the mole and subtract out one height of the mole when we do this in code. So what's that look like? Well, First, you're going to create a procedure, and you're going to call it move mole. Then you're going to click on your image sprite, and you're going to use the move to procedure for your image sprite. We're going to use the random integer function that you can find in the math function. And we're going to generate a random number starting at 0, which would be the left hand, which would be fine if our mole appeared on the left hand over here, if our mole was over here and that was the corner of the mole and it showed up over here, that's okay to be at zero. But we can't go all the way to this side because if we did, our mole would appear off the screen. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to subtract the width of the mole. Same thing with the height. We don't want to go all the way down to the corner here. Our mole would appear off the screen. So we're going to subtract the height of the mole. This will have the effect of making sure that the mole can't go any further to the side other than its width. It locks it into that place. So it won't disappear off the screen for us. So this will be the next piece of code that you do to make the mole move. Here's a blown up version of it. Pause the video if you want to create that. It's also in the notes page, which might be easier than going through the video. OK, so here's the steps, the exact steps. Click the procedure drawer in the block editor. Drag out the procedure block, not the procedure with result, the procedure block, two different procedure blocks. Click the text procedure on the new block and enter move moles. So that way we set the name. We're going to use the mole drawer and click on the call mole move to location procedure. Then we're going to put in our information where we do our width. Inside checking our random numbers. We can go from um, 0 to the width. You'll have to throw away the 100 that's there and put in your calculation in for that spot. The other thing that you have to make sure is you have to make sure that the mole is actually enabled. Um, we can do that when we first turn it on inside of the properties window. But we are going to be making this mole appear and disappear. So when it first starts, we want to make sure we can see it on the screen. But then after that, it's going to be disappearing and appearing. Then we're going to do the same thing with the Y coordinates. So the first thing we're going to do when the screen initializes is we're going to move them all. That's the first thing that happens. Then every one second, we're going to make them all move. So the advantage of having a method is we don't have to do this code twice now. We can just call move mole. That procedure is already done for us. The next thing you'll have to do is start keeping score. This is a matter of if we touch the sprite. So when Canvas 1 touched sprite, let me make this bigger so you can see it. There you go. When Canvas 1 dot touched, when they touched the canvas, this time we're going to do, if we touched the sprite. So when we click on touch sprite, it's going to get touched sprite. So if we touched the sprite, they might say which sprite. Well, there's only one sprite, so it's not concerned with which sprite. We're just concerned that we touched a sprite, any sprite at this point. As long as we touched a sprite, well, the only sprite on there is the mole. If we had multiple sprites, we could be specific and list which sprite we were interested in. In fact, if you use this drop down, you'll see one of the sprites in the list is the mole that you created. So if they touch the sprite, we're going to take the hit counter dot text and we're going to do like we did before and increase it by one. Else, we're going to set the miscounter dot text to miscounter dot text plus one. So we're going to increase the misses if they miss. When you're doing an if statement, remember it starts out as just an if then. To make it an if then else, you have to click on this little blue square and drag the else into the box and then it becomes an if then else and then you can use that statement. So this idea of creating a procedure to do the mole move is called procedural abstraction, also known as the black box. You don't necessarily need to know how it works in order to use it. 
It also gives us the advantage of being able to reuse the code over and over again. Now, you have the advantages. You wrote it, so you know how it works. But there's other procedures that you might use that other people have written that you don't need to know how they work. Like, you don't need to know how your carburetor works on a car in order to drive it. That's the idea of procedural abstraction. You don't need to know how the car actually starts when you turn the key. You just know when you turn the key, the car starts. Advantages of using procedures. It's easier to test code. So if there's a mistake, you only have to go one place to fix it. You don't have to go to five or six different places within your code. There's only one spot that you need to look at to fix it. If you need to change something, let's say you don't like the way the mole moves for some reason. Well, you can change how the mole moves and it changes it for everything. You can also collect a library of procedures. Unfortunately, App Inventor can't do that right now. That doesn't mean we, it won't be able to in the future. But you can have a library of procedures that you could then import into other programs. This is how a lot of languages work. People put out libraries, for example, in Python, they might put out a library to control a camera. And you can download that library and have all the methods and all the code you need to control a camera. You want to make sure you choose good names for your procedures, so that way um, it makes sense what the procedure does, like move mole makes sense, it moves the mole. It wouldn't make sense to call it um, garbly gook, that would be silly. That doesn't make any sense to what it's supposed to do. Don't call procedure X or procedure 1, those are all silly things. We also want a reset button. Well, this is pretty straightforward. When they click the reset button, we should set the hit count to 0 and the miss count to zero. Reset them to zero. We also want to add a control for when the mole is touched. Now this is different than when the sprite is touched. That's canvas operation. This is for when you touch the mole. We're going to call the sound one dot vibrate. So this is not a sound play. If you scroll through the sound one features, one of them is a dot vibrate, and you can choose how many milliseconds it vibrates for. Remember, a thousand milliseconds is a, set, is a second. We don't want it to vibrate for a full second. We're going to do about a tenth of that and do a hundred milliseconds. And it's just a little vibrate every time you touch the ball. So here is the complete code that we're going to be looking at. Screen one initialize, we're going to move the mole. Uh, when the clock timer is goes off, we're going to move the mole. That procedure is right here. We call um, mole and we're going to move it to a particular x and y location based upon a random number between zero and the width of the canvas minus the mole width. And the same thing for the y value. When the mole's touched, we're going to vibrate the, the phone. When the canvas is touched, we're going to see if we touched a particular sprite and set the hit counter or the miss counter appropriately. That's the reason why we don't have the um, score based upon the mole touch, because we want to be able to record misses as well. So what we're doing is checking to see if you touch the canvas, did you actually touch a sprite? If we just put it on the mole, we'd only be able to tell when they touched the mole, not when they didn't touch the mole. So that's the reason why that's there. And then a reset button, of course, to set everything back to zero. So this is all the code that you're going to need. You can pause the video and leave this up there on the screen for you or pull it from the notes file. It's in there as well. A couple things that you can do to make this a little different. You can add buttons to speed up or slow down the mole. This would be by changing the clock timer. You can also add a label to keep track of and display the number of times the mole has appeared and moved if you wanted to. You can add another image sprite with a picture of something that the, that the user should not hit. At that point, you would have to go in, instead of just being a generic, did you touch a sprite, you'd have to be very specific. Which sprite did you touch? If you touched any other sprite other than the mole, you would subtract 
points. If you touch the flower, they would maybe lose five points. That would be a good place to put something like that here. It's, if this was a flower, if you touch the flower, that's maybe you subtracted five points from your score or something like that. So that would be a good use of that. Or you could go back down here and again change this to a specific sprite that you touched rather than just the generic touch sprite. So a couple things that you can play with there. Uh, instead of using pictures of a mole, let the user select a picture with a contact picker component. So that allows you to go through your phone and pick pictures from your contacts. So on your phone, a lot of times you have images with your contacts. You can pick that instead of being the mole, it's the person's picture. And you can kind of mash your favorite person in the mole masher, which is kind of fun. Um, review. Canvas component uses an XY coordinate system. So we have to make sure that we are paying attention from the upper left hand corner is zero and the canvas width minus one at the right. So we're one less the canvas width. We want to make sure that our mole fits on the screen, which is why we were doing the subtraction. Image sprites can be uh, sensed through the canvas and through the individual image sprites touched method. So there's two ways to determine where we're touching on the screen. You can also create real-time applications that not just react to user input, but also respond to the device's internal timer. That's the clock. Uh, we have our labels, of course, to display our scores. We have our tactile feedback, also called heptic response, to do our vibration method. And instead of using built-in methods, you're creating your own procedure, this time called a mole move. And you can generate some randomness using the integer, um, random integer method. So those are the things that we learned in this lesson. So your goal now is to go back and create this program. You're going to submit it into MoleMash. If you choose, you can go through the video, but you could also just click on the notes and it'll open up a PDF of all of these notes, which might be easier to follow rather than trying to scroll through the video. So when you're all done, just go into and submit your both your AIA and your APK. I want both files submitted in for MoleMash. I want it, your completed version of MoleMash. Feel free to modify it as you choose. Bare minimum, it must be the MoleMash as I've described today. Here is the image of the mole. In order to get that, you have to right click, save link as. And you'll see we get mole.png, and you can save that in your downloads. So that's it for today. Have fun.